to my partial video essay on introducing multimodal projects into the first year composition classroom. And as quoted by Fedorenko, Kortz argues that multimodal literacy is formed by a combination of four literacies, namely information literacy, visual literacy, multicultural literacy, and media literacy. And these contribute to effective lifelong education of students as well as a successful life in the community. They're forming aspects of meaning, representation, and creating new text, material actualization, framing, design, and production. Hi, my name is Mark Baird, and I am a sixth grade math and science teacher. We use technology a ton of different ways in our classroom. For science, it might be something as simple as typing notes together on a shared tablet where students can see each other's work and thoughts. Sometimes they create video lessons to teach each other photosynthesis. Sometimes we use it for drill and practice, like when we're reviewing for a test. We use apps like Kahoot, Quizlet, or, or Quizzes Live to help students quiz each other in real time. Sometimes in science, we also use it uh, to learn about life science topics through hyperdocs. So students click through a document where we have garnered and um, curated resources for them from watching videos to reading scholarly articles to maybe they're using Google Drawing to do a sketch note of the material they've learned so far. Mathematics, uh, it's very similar to science. We use it a lot for drill and practice is one of the more common ones. We also use technology in math for uh, students to do long distance learning if they miss school. So for instance, a website that's very commonly used is Edpuzzle, where I record myself teaching a particular content or lesson topic. And then students are then able to go through that video on their own time and answer questions that I embed in the video myself. And it's a quick assessment tool it's also a good way for students to review without me there. So those are just a couple of the many ways that we use technology in our classroom. Wow, that all sounds like multimodal activities. How can this type of material be brought in and justified in first year composition classrooms? Well, that's why I introduced the multimodal first year composition classroom. Wow. The first assignment, the avatar creator. So to recap, students create a virtualized representation of their self wherever they choose in subway or form. Student writes about their chosen form. A word limitation will be placed. Students will be randomly assigned certain adverbs, adjectives, and verbs that can be used in their response. 
were to be assigned after Avatar creation. And this leads into the next assignment, the internet debate. This leads to the article, Video Essays and Virtual Animals, an Approach to Teaching Multimodal Composition and Digital Literacy by Christina M. Galvin. And this article discusses how the multimodal project is one that has an emphasis on process and rhetoric. And with this, there is a section that covers the video essay. And with the video essay, uh, what's unique about it is that it allows students the opportunity to reflect on how software interfaces ask them to behave. Uh, like with written essays, video essays should make a clear argument, and also video essay creators uh, must consider how audible and video registers reinforce, elaborate on, conflict with, or distract viewers from the essay's argument. Therefore, successful video essays take seriously how the combination of moving in images, still images, oral narration, and revised written script can work together to facilitate audience comprehension. You can think about the oral presentation where a student has to stand up in front of their peers and present some of their findings. This could be through slides or just general just reading lines off a of paper, but the a shot of adrenaline and the nervousness they have can make them stutter and they can seem like they know less about the topic than they actually do. Uh, this is compared to a video essay where a student can do multiple shots until they feel like they got this take just right. And just so you know, those 25 seconds of video took me about 20 takes to get right. Um, the first 18 were spent not wearing this headset, and then when I listened to it afterward, I found out you couldn't really hear me that well, so I had to do it again while wearing the headset. And if it took me that many tries to feel confident over what I've been researching, then imagine a student who's just doing this in one try in front of a group of about 20 to 30 people, or more. And of course, there is more than one way to do a multimodal project. This is a rhizomatic map of author influence, for example, and then this is a video response uh, over the composing process sent by uh, me. And then there are plenty of free programs you can look at in uh, referencing to students. Like this is DaVinci, for example. It is a free program. Um, it does everything you would need to do. And there are plenty of tutorials online that will show you how to use the program. Of course, the professor can also make video tutorials themselves. And then you can use PowerPoint to actually screen capture um, the process of actually composing a video, as you can see here. And Buthalame. And students are entering the university with an increasing amount of technological influence and they can adapt and they will change and this will open a lot of new avenues for students or or about two in the morning doing the thing last minute or when you're sick and at work too supposing that we just have somebody like talk about their essay topic while we watch them make dinner i mean i mean i guess if somebody really wanted to do that they could 